All right, guys. Hey, welcome back. I am Jason Salyer, and this is Gregory. You've seen him hey probably guys. before. Um, and we are about to embark upon 30-ish miles in a straight line, right? As the crow flies, but as the as the Gregory paddles, as the map <laughs> as the map flies, <laughs> roughly 30 miles of of offshore paddling. I don't know if you can see it, but our first point, not where we're going to be spending the night tonight, but is out there. I can just barely see it above the horizon. And that's probably, how many miles away is that? Uh, I would estimate that to be one, two, three, four, six nautical miles. Six nautical miles to our first, basically, land. Um, we're not going to be stopping there, but that's the first thing that we can see and visually navigate. And that's going to be important for us so we don't have to be looking at a compass the whole time. Um, but we can kind of lay out where exactly we're going here. We can look on the map. So this is obviously the Florida Bay. We're going to be going into the Everglades National Park. So we have our permits and things of that nature. But we're leaving from Lower Matacumba Key. Um, and basically, we're coming out this channel right here. And then our goal is to head on about a 340 um, bearing to Buchanan Bank, which is about six nautical miles. And then on from there, we go to Rabbit Key. We're allowed to camp at Rabbit Key with an out, um, a wilderness permit from the National Park Service. Assuming we get a good tailwind. Uh, what's the worst that could happen? What's the worst that could happen? We've got water. We've got about... Yeah. What's, a, what's a primary concern? Water. Water, water. right? Yeah. There, this is a desert. This is, this is a very wet desert. There's zero drinking water the entire way that we're going, the 30-ish miles that we're going to be paddling. Um, it's very windy today. What was the top wind speed? 20 miles an hour. Yeah, we're going to be hitting 20 mile an hour winds, um, which if you've ever done any kind of paddling, especially stand-up paddle boarding, uh, that's a lot. <laughs> that's, that's typically, you wouldn't even go out. Yeah, that's a, that's a no-fly, but yeah. we've, we've but, rerouted to get it behind us and take yeah. advantage of the wind. So hopefully so. we're gonna have a tailwind. Hopefully a tailwind the whole way, if everything stays the way it is currently, current weather patterns. Um, yeah, we've got water, because there's zero resupply out there. We've got two 10-liter bladders in conjunction with some one liter water bottle each about of us has about liters. yeah about three li extra liters of water and if that doesn't do it then um sos got sos beacon here both of us are wearing an sos gps a garmin uh inreach mini that's what we're both wearing on our life jackets and we've got basically all the supplies that we hope we will need and we'll go through all that stuff when we get to land this evening if if we make it to land this evening <laughs> so uh yeah so there's that but um that is where we're setting out um and we'll check we in. filed our trip logs with uh, the respective spouses so yeah. they know kind of what our intent is that's not to say that that's what will actually happen but our intent has uh been uh shared and documented and then yeah. uh we've got a rendezvous point in flamingo at uh 1200 on monday on monday so here we go Oh, it is a bit daunting heading out into the, you know, the nothingness, right? Luckily, the wind has been completely at our back, pushing us directly where we want to go. We got a sea turtle right here. Oh, there he goes. Nice. Water is maybe three feet deep right here, at most. That is one cool thing about out here. You're probably not going to drown. Pulling around the back side of this little island here. So we've stopped in um, out of the wind here just behind these mangroves is completely sheltered from the wind. There's zero wind right here, which is kind of nice. And if our primary concerns out here, I guess what would cause us for, or keep us from hitting our destinations is going to be most likely wind, not currents, not anything else, but it's going to be wind. And if it should change drastically, it's really hard to overcome on a paddleboard. Um, and one of our options is just to hit basically the closest island, the closest key that we can get to 
and take refuge on the uh, on the what'd you call it? leeward leeward side. leeward side. And yes, this is Buchanan Banks, and this yeah. is Buchanan Key. Yeah, we are currently. I'll give you an idea. We started right here, and we have paddled to here, Buchanan Keys, and we're going to be working our way to Barnes Key, which is right there. That's our next land that we could possibly stop at if we needed to. But then beyond that, we're hoping that we're going to see. And I think if you look to the far right, yep. see on that shoulder, you see there's a low lying piece. I do. We might be lined right up with Rabbit Key because that's six miles and that's probably the extent of our, yeah. our site. Yeah, so I think, I think we've got visual on our final destination for the day and that's Rabbit Key. We're going to be camping out on this small little key. Um, right before we get to the, the main one. Just maybe know we're not allowed to actually set foot on these keys because yeah. they're protected. So we're just in the leeward side. Um, however, if there was an emergency, I'm yeah. assuming we would- Rules go out the window when- Pull it, into those. If you're gonna die, yeah, that's right. But yeah, if it was crazy, really, really crazy windy and we just couldn't make it to our destination, this would be the shelter. Um, you could potentially, see if I can walk my way through the muck over here. Um, you could potentially string a hammock up between some of the mangroves. Not that that's legal, but if you were in an emergency situation, that's something that you could do. Uh, we also discussed potentially dragging one of the boards and setting it up, up on top and wedging it in between some of the mangrove roots and then just being able to rest on a platform like that or really just kind of tying off here and laying on top of the boards to get some rest and wait out the night if that was the if that was the situation um hopefully nothing like that comes up on this trip but if that was the case i think that'd be our first course of action is just kind of find one of these small keys and camp out navigating out here is pretty easy just because you can see the small little keys or islands whatever you want to call them you can visually get get your bearings and know where you're going even without a compass or anything like that. Cause that is getting mighty shallow. I got a blade. I got a, a paddle blade thickness right there. All right, so what we're gonna try to do is take advantage of this tailwind see if we can rig up some sort of sail. Yeah, uh, a tarp. Sea to summit hammock tarp. Also known as a sea to summit hammock tarp sail. Tarp sail. <laughs> Lost paddle scenario. Injured yeah. Injured paddler scenario. Yeah. Um, or just, just, just taking advantage of, yeah, yeah taking advantage of, but lift your feet up. I don't know if you can pick up how fast we're moving. We're not paddling. We're just sitting here. And if you could see the land over there. We're moving. This is a nice sail. Put it up. Oh yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Ah. <laughs> you can steer these things too, just by pulling on the. Yeah. This is amazing. We're tracking. Look at that. It's a bit the same. We call it. It's like a, a big sail. This sail. Like sailing. It's like sailing. It's sailing. You know, people should use the wind to move, move their boats through the, through the water. water. <laughs> through the water. <laughs> It's amazing no one's come up with this. We are cooking right now. <laughs> like this. Look at this wake. You know what I mean? We might get fined for going this fast out here. I don't know. It's, it's a... Oh, there it is. There There's it is. There's a full, <laughs> full set. Look at that. Huh? <laughs> All these out? Look. Yeah, I mean, we're going we like five knots. We're moving. Yeah, we're... we've got 30 miles to go. This is awesome. Uh, we are cruising. Gosh, we are moving fast. That is awesome how well this is working. We and the, trolling for marlin if it was marlin water. We really could be trolling right now. Yeah. Yeah, if you were to lose your paddle. Lose your paddle. Screw it. Who wants a paddle? <laughs> We did it. Time. Probably four hours, maybe. <laughs> oh, yes. I'm not in. I'm not in. Oh. 
<laughs> that was almost the I first one. So this is Little Rabbit Key, one of only a few places that you can actually camp in the Everglades National Park out here on the water. We did it, my friend. Swivelized. There's a there's a a little boardwalk. Okay, so I don't want to get my feet wet. Now look at that. Nice little clearing up here. It's even got a porta john, and I don't mind if I do. Oh yeah, luxury. What do we got in here? A wizard, the magic of fresh. Room mist, ah, to freshen it up in here. That's nice, Hawaiian retreat. No problems at all with securing my gear to the board specifically the water bladder here that's the most important thing that we brought along but honestly i don't really trust these bungees that much because i just feel like they could fail at any moment and then i'd be without the most important stuff um and these boards are not designed very well for carrying cargo i guess because most people aren't you know like us and do overnighters on a stand-up paddleboard but but so what we're doing is we're just going to put on some small loops using this Dyneema cordage. Now I've got a loop and real easy connection that I can hook a bungee cord or lash things down with paracord or something, doesn't really matter, but that's gonna stay on there and make things, make life easy. Rather than trying to fish it through this little, little yeah, hole like I'm doing right now, it's like almost impossible. Even these bigger ones on the boards, even these bigger ones are still difficult to get. You can't hook a bungee cord on that. I think I'm filming. Mm -hmm. I got a whopper. Woo! It goes into the pond. Yeah, see the fish right there? Drop it down right in front of us. They're all down below us, a bunch of them. Look at this little guy. Snapper? Yeah, it's a little snapper. Yeah. So a nice little snapper. But a very small one. So we're gonna let him go. Okay. If you were just gonna fish with one lure, it's hard to beat a jig. Yeah. You, can, you can cast them, you can jig them. Yep, just drop them straight down, jig them up and down. They ride hook up so they don't get tangled in weeds as easily. I mean, everything gets tangled in weeds, but. So we're paddling around the around the island, scoping about, see if there's any any possible good fishy locations. But um, as we came around this side here, we went straight straight into the wind, head on. And if our plan was to go out and back, come to this little little key here, do some fishing, hang out for a little while, and then head back, uh, there's just no way. I, we would never make it back. It's like running on a treadmill, going absolutely nowhere, no matter how hard you paddle. There's some tackle. If you were out here in a, in a nasty situation where you were stuck and wanted to catch a fish, needed to catch a fish, there's tackle on every branch. Here's a nice little jig with a shrimp attached. And not that it's um, legal at all, but if you really were desperate and wanted something to eat, you could use one of those hooks with a little bait on it and probably snag one of those birds if I had to guess. You can't ask for any more than that. Wind was at our backs, sun was out, water's warm, weather was perfect. There's nobody at our camp spot. We the whole island to ourselves, except for the birds in the background. And uh, not a soul to be seen anywhere on the Florida Bay. Except for that egret out there, hunting. He's been there a while. Very patient. Ooh, fish are tempting him on the back. Mm-hmm. He didn't flinch. Sun's setting there. Um, we had some chow little mountain house kind of freeze-dried stuff super easy to pack and and cook up no dishes to be done just got to pack this out that's it 
And now Gregory's having a little Joe and I'm having a little green tea. Um, living large. Life is pretty good. The wind at the back today was incredible. It was yeah, right on. It was too easy. A little bit of planning. It, a little bit of planning. Well, that, that's something we need to talk about is the, talk about the um, meticulous planning. The the semi meticulous. <laughs> well, we we were way we were. I was watching the weather for the last ten days, knowing that I've I've got a compromised shoulder, so I didn't want to paddle into the wind. So yeah. we were waiting for it, and um, the wind did clock around, and then we changed our plans from going from Flamingo to Isla Morada. We just yeah, swapped just around reverse directions, and we went Isla Morada to Flamingo and take advantage of the wind corridor. Yeah, and <clears throat> and it worked. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> most of the time, most of my time spent in the Everglades has been in sawgrass and um, hammocks. And yeah, what do you call them? Uh, cypress hammocks, that kind of stuff, slash pines. But um, this is actually part of the Everglades. And then we have icebergs. It's icebergs. very, very unique in, in the Everglades National Yeah, not a, lot, not a lot of people get to see the icebergs. Sun's going down, just about dark now. Got camp set up. I don't know if you can see what I'm looking at here. I'll probably show you in the morning. But I've just got my uh, inflatable uh, air mattress there. And really light fleece blanket. I've got a fleece that I can put on and a fleece I can put on my head. And that's pretty much it. That's gonna be camp for the night. Let's get a little lighter. Oh, there we go. Gregory's got a very similar setup, but he's in a bivy bag. And that'll help keep the skeeters off of him. But there are lightning bugs out here. I had no idea there were lightning bugs in the Florida Keys at all. Especially way out here, miles from the mainland. But they're lighting up all in the mangroves. It's pretty cool. Getting ready to bed down tonight, and we were looking over at these mangrove trees, and they're shiny wet, you know. We're thinking, hey, what's going on with that? And I do remember reading about mangroves and that's how they get their moisture they suck up the salt water and they filter out the salt and if we get gregory to lick one of these leaves let me see and get you get you a shot <laughs> licking one of those leaves salty and it's oh. su wow. super salty water this these water droplets let's see if you can see that yeah you can see the kind of that perspiration on the leaves and on the main on the back of the look at the back of the leaves here this is where it's really evident yeah, let's see if I can get that. There we go. So you can see that. And the tree is just pumping that salt out. And even the bark. This is a dry, dry day. It's been hot, and this bark is just completely wet. Soaked. Yeah, very and, cool. And it's salty as... Salty as all salt. get out, yeah. <laughs> so we we just spotted a rat climbing into Gregory's bivy bag over there. That's far more... Comfortable in the place I live. <laughs> <laughs>